Unlike atoms, molecules are capable of rotating and vibrating. Now, generally speaking, whenever any object moves, such as a molecule, that change in motion can change the energy of the molecule. And if the change in energy is great enough, our electron within the molecule can gain that energy and transition from a lower energy state, let's say the ground quantum state, to an excited quantum state. Now, we have two types of motion inside our molecule that can basically change the energy by enough for that electron to actually transition between our two quantum states. So we have both vibrational and rotational motion can lead to this electron transition. So let's suppose we have diagram A in which our object is vibrating, is oscillating with some frequency F. Now, in this particular case, our diatomic molecule has a vibrational energy E that is given by this equation, where H is Planck's constant, F is the frequency of oscillation, and V is the vibrational quantum number. So V can be a value that begins with zero and increases by increment of one. Now, likewise, we can define the rotational energy of our diatomic molecule as a result of the rotation given by this equation. So, the rotational energy is given by h bar squared divided by 2i, where i is the moment of inertia, multiplied by l plus 1, multiplied by l, where l is the rotational or angular quantum number. So, l is also a number that begins with 0 and increases by increments of 1. Now, let's suppose our electron transitions from V to V plus 1 and from L to L minus 1. In such a transition, the electron is said to gain energy. And if we use these conditions and these equations, we see that for such a transition, our change in energy as a result of the change in vibrational motion is given by this equation, while our change in energy as a result of rotational motion is given by this equation. Now, if we combine these energies, that will give us the change in energy total. So, the total change in energy of our diatomic molecule as a result of the change in vibrational and change in rotational motion. And that is given by the following equation. So, this equation is true as long as the delta V is positive 1, so the electron jumps from V to V plus 1, and as long as the delta L is negative 1. So L jumps, or the electron jumps from L to L minus 1, where L in this case is a number that begins with 1 and goes to 2, to 3, to 4, and so on. So this is our equation that gives us the change in energy of our molecule. And if the change is great enough, the electron electron can actually gain that energy and transition from a lower to a higher state. Now, because of this ability of molecules to experience vibrational and rotational motion, there are many more electrons, tr electron transitions that can actually occur in molecules as compared to their individual atoms. Therefore, the band line spectrum will show many more lines for the molecules than for our individual constituent atoms. So let's Let's suppose we take some particular diatomic molecule. So our uh, red is given by let's suppose X and our Y and our green molecule atom is given by Y. So X can be for example H and Y can be Cl. So we're examining let's suppose a, hydrochloric, uh, a hydrochloride molecule. So we basically have the x-axis, which is our energy. And as we go from this side to this side, our energy increases. Now, the middle uh, line, the middle red line, corresponds to the energy of H multiplied by F. 
Now, what exactly is our right line? So the third line from this side. So this basically corresponds to a delta L of positive one. So that means if the L transitions not from L to L minus one, but from L to L plus one, then our atom, then our molecule and electron will gain a certain amount of energy and it will jump from this state to, uh, to this state. And notice that for this particular case, our formula is not given by this equation, but it's given by this equation. So basically the delta E total is given by HF plus this quantity, where this quantity comes from using L to L plus one. So our equation is no longer given by this, but given by this. Now because the V still goes from V to V plus one, the HF doesn't actually change. So this equation works as long as our delta V is still positive one and delta L is positive one as well. Where in this case, our delta L was negative one. So this first line basically corresponds to our electron absorbing energy and jumping from V to V plus one and jumping from L to L minus one. So this line corresponds to L equals one to L equals zero and this corresponds to L equals zero to L equals one. And in both cases, the electron is said to gain some photon of energy that has some given frequency. Frequency. 